class today. I'm real excited for having you all here. I love to cook, so this was the perfect, um, a, the perfect subject for me. And I'll tell you exactly how I did all of this uh, that you'll see on the screen. Not only do I love to cook, but I love to teach people about how to cook. And so today I chose the topic of easy meals for busy people. And we seem to be so busy these days that sometimes we let the meal time go and we rely on um, frozen foods or, or fast foods or going out to a restaurant. So I have a few ideas that I like to share, some of the things I do myself at home. So we'll just get started right away. Oh yeah, this has to be on too. You know, every time they teach me how to do this, and then I forget. There I go. Now it does. Yes, I think so. Okay. So I kind of go with the three P's, if you will: plan, prepare, preparation methods, and package. Um, I guess that's four P's. So, planning meals. It's really um, a good idea when you're thinking about cooking that you plan some meals. I like to have some go-to ideas, things that um, just I go to when, is it too loud? Wait, what was the sound? echo. There's an echo in here. Can you turn it down, Chinook? Is that better? No. temperature. Anybody know the right temperature for a refrigerator? 
between 33 and 40? 39? No, no higher than 41. But if you get down to 30, too close to that 33 mark, you're going to have some frozen spots. So I, I tried that in my refrigerator and I found that the top shelf was close to freezing mm -hmm. and the bottom shelf was quite warm. Right. And so yeah. it really varied in size. So those are the things that you have to take into consideration when you're putting your food away. You don't want to put things like lettuce up on the top shelf where it freezes. So it's good to have two or three refrigerator uh, thermometers in your refrigerator so you can kind of check it at different zones. Okay. Um, so prepare ahead. Now this is my favorite thing to do because usually my husband does it for me. He loves to chop, and so he, he does a lot of chopping. And I don't have one today because um, it broke, but I was, I was gonna bring it with me, but it broke. It's a chopper, and it's one of those things that's as seen on TV, and it's shaped like um, an oval with a squared off end and it lifts up like this and there's different blades you can put in and you just chop the heck out of stuff. So my husband is my chopper and he likes his chopper. So we do a lot of this. Um, we prepare, we'll make some diced onion, we'll make some peeled carrots. I don't like baby carrots because I don't think they taste like carrots. So I buy real carrots in the bag and I peel them and we slice some and we make sticks out of some and we just cut them in several different directions and then we have them. Um, I clean the celery when I get home and we do dice a little bit, but celery to me kind of dries out so I don't make a whole lot of hen. One thing with celery is, well this is with most fresh vegetables, you need to keep them relatively dry without drying them out. But if they're too wet and then you wrap them in something like plastic or put them in a plastic container, they can they will spoil faster. So you want to make sure that things are dry. Um, I clean my lettuce. I, I use a couple of kinds of lettuce, the romaine lettuce that you see here and then a, a baby romaine mix. When you wash your romaine lettuce, be sure that you take, all, take the end off, take all the leaves apart make sure they're all rinsed out because dirt can hide up in those leaves. Once they're all rinsed out, let it dry a few minutes. And then I like to wrap it in paper towels and then put it in a bag. And then that way the paper towels absorb most of the moisture. Um, I like to clean my bell peppers ahead. It's, I don't like bell peppers because I, I, I love them, but I don't like the mess that they make. And I don't know if you can see it on one of these pictures. One of my pictures, um, I probably didn't take, put it in here because the, the um, cutting board was red because I was cutting up a red bell pepper. Well, I don't like that mess, so I like to get it all done. You know, if I'm gonna make a mess, I'm just gonna make a big one and get it over with. Um, I like to clean my radishes, but that's one of the things that will dry out, so I just maybe slice up a few of them and keep the rest clean them and put them in a, in a baggie after they're kind of dried out. Do you use any kind of product to clean your vegetables? I don't. Or you're just wash them with a tank of water? I just wash them with water, um, with plenty of water. And the other thing is to use friction because that's what's going to get rid of the, anything that's on the leaves. So you rub them. Mm -hmm. um, now, I do I do wash a few things. Melons, I wash using vinegar water. Do you, anybody was here for the bacteria a while, while back? Mm -hmm. We talked about bacteria. And remember we talked about vinegar being like an antiseptic and it will really help clean your vegetables and fruits if you want to do that. I don't, but I do that with uh, melons. So cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon, anything like that because of the places they grow and how they're handled. And the cantaloupe especially has all those little ridges on it. So bacteria can really hide in there. So it's, um, does anybody remember? I think it's like a half a cup to a gallon of water or something like that. You can Google it and find out how much vinegar to use to clean your vegetables. Is that white vinegar? White vinegar. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, just the cheap stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is this is what it looks like. Oh, there's there's the cutting board that stayed red. Um, this is how I do things. We cut up the vegetables and we put them in the glass jars, wide glass jars. I just like glass. I think it um, it doesn't leave a flavor um, like plastic does. It doesn't misshapen, get misshapen in the, my, in the dishwasher like plastic can. Um, it tends to clean out easier. You know, plastic gets all stained and nasty, and so I, I just like glass, and I think it's pretty. So, and I love canning jars, so that's why I use lots of canning jars. So we'll make, um, you know, we'll cut up the vegetables like that, and then, like I said, if you're, you've got this mess, so why not just go ahead and make a bigger mess? So I'm gonna walk away from walking, and I will get this salad that I made. So I made these salads, and put them in the jars. I made a big salad to have um, yesterday, and then I made three extras. And um, you're gonna ask me how long this will last. And I would uh, typically say, I would use it within five days. <clears throat> but on Sunday of this week, we had one that we hadn't eaten. And um, so my son, Anthony, which some of you know, said, can I eat that salad? And I said, oh, you know, it's a week old. But look at it, and if it, if it smells okay, and if there's no, like, gross slime or anything, go ahead and eat it. And he said it was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with it. And the reason that would be is, the, the other thing the glass does is it totally keeps out air. So, um, you know, if you put something hot in a glass jar like this and then tighten the lid, it's gonna almost seal, and that means that there's really not any air in there. So I think that that's probably um, part of the reason. So this salad has um, tomatoes on the bottom, and then cucumber, and then I put in some garbanzo beans and some cooked barley, just for a little uh, protein boost. And then I put in bell pepper, uh, celery, and then carrot, and then finally leaf lettuce. Now the reason that I did this in this direction is because you want the things that are, that can take a little pressure to be at the bottom. You wouldn't want to put the nice tender lettuce at the bottom because everything's going to weigh it down and it's not going to be tender and nice anymore. It's going to be all bruised. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now if I were to make one of these to bring with me to work, which is a really neat idea, is I would put the lettuce up to here. You know, I would put less of everything because this is for the three of us. So for me, I would put less of everything. And then at the top, I would put um, maybe some chicken or some cheese or a hard boiled egg or something like that. And then when I get to work and I'm ready to eat, I just dump it into a bowl, which is what I would do at home too. Just dump it out into a bowl and toss it and add dressing. And there you go, you have a salad. So. So now at home I have my three salads for the rest of the week and I don't have to think about getting everything out and chopping it. I just bring this out of the refrigerator. <clears throat> I didn't have anything pretty to put on this page, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about cooking whole grains ahead. And um, Jewel, could you hand me those four little packages that are laying there of grains? I love to have grains to eat. Um, thank you. Just lay them all right here. Thank you. I love to have grains, and I love whole grains. And we've had whole grain classes here, and I love, I love eating them. So, whole grains are things like barley, quinoa, um, farro, uh, corn. So, oh, they're so good for us. Brown rice is so good for us because of the antioxidants and the fiber in them. So I like to cook them ahead, and I just buy the bags of, of grains either at, a lot of them you can't get at Safeway, but some you can. And so I get others at, at like Sprouts or something. But I like to cook a pot and then just refrigerate it and have it for all week. 
And so, like I put some, I cooked barley, so I put some barley in here. And um, I'll, in a little bit, we'll talk about other ways that I use the barley that I cooked. There are also these great grains that are pre-cooked. I got all of these at Safeway. This is quinoa, brown rice, and red rice. It's already cooked, you just microwave it for 90 seconds, and it's ready to go. This one is brown and wild rice, and then there's brown rice with shiitake mushrooms and brown, brown wild rice with quinoa. They're excellent, it's, um, and some of the big box stores like Sam's have, um, have it too, so they have some of this. But they're excellent, they taste really good, 90 seconds, and they're just as nourishing as, as the others. So I really like to keep something like this in my pantry for those days that I don't have cooked grains. Um, but, you know, if you don't mind cooking them, I think barley is probably the one that takes the most time and it's about 45 to 50 minutes. So it, to me, that's not a great deal of investment of time because I can cook <coughs> dinner while it's on the stove. Do they freeze well? Yes, mm -hmm. it does. I put them in little baggies, the freezer Ziplocs, and then um, just mush the air out of it before you sew it, and then kind of roll it over. Probably put two cups in a quart size bag. Yeah. Okay, so prepare ahead. So this is this is what I did yesterday. I prepared ahead, and I went to the grocery store and. Um, got the things that I wanted, and came home and started cooking. So I roasted a whole chicken, and then I roasted potatoes and zucchini to go with that. And then the second day, I would make a chicken quesadilla and a fruit salad. I didn't write the directions for a quesadilla, but what I would do is take um, a tortilla and put dice up some of the chicken and warm it, maybe with some salsa or with some of my chopped up onion and red bell pepper. So I mix it up till it's hot. Then I would put it on a tortilla with some cheese and then just cook it like you're cooking a grilled cheese sandwich without the butter on the outside though. Just cook it on a grill, on a grill, and it's really good. So that's what we would have maybe on one day of the week. And then I'll show you the chicken and barley soup when we get there, okay? So I gave you directions on how to do this. It's really easy. Does, any, does anyone get intimidated by a whole chicken? Good, good, because if you do, you can also just skip these steps and go to Safeway and get the roasted chicken at the deli because that's what some people do, and some people like me do that once in a while too, so it's okay. So I would spray my dish with nonstick spray. It makes it easier to clean up, but you could skip that step. I like to put some celery and onion under the chicken because that just gives it flavor and helps keep it moist. Um, I would put the chicken in there and take out the giblets and stuff like that, and I just toss them. Um, and then season it with salt and pepper. Now yesterday, I bought a package of 10 chicken thighs and cooked them as well. And I'll tell you what I do with those in a little bit. So I roasted that until it was um, done, and who knows how hot it needs to be. Well, it tells you right here, 165. Do you all have a thermometer to test your meat and things at home? Good. So make sure that you, especially poultry, you need to make sure that you cook ahead, or cook well done. Allow the chicken to cool until it's easy, easy, easy to handle. And then I took the breasts off and took the chicken, the thigh meat and the other uh, leg meat and put it, kind of put it separately in two little containers. Remember to label and date and use or freeze within five days. So those are the things to do. Um, now, what I did yesterday is after I took all that meat off of the bones, I then put the bones in a pan with all the stuff that was in the baking dish because that had a lot of juice in it. And I added a couple of cans of chicken broth, use the low sodium chicken broth, and that will make your stock richer. And then cook it about an hour 
and then you're going to strain it off and we're going to make some soup by starting with some olive oil and this this is my mixture these are the things i like in almost anything so a lot of stuff that you're going to see today i use celery onion and bell pepper so for the soup i had zucchini because i'm going to use it in a little bit so i had a little bit left over and so i used it in this put some a little bit of oil in my pan and kind of soften those vegetables for a few minutes and then i strain the broth from the bones through a colander you don't have to have anything fancy if you have a colander just put it over your pot and just strain it through there i'm not fussy i don't care if it's perfectly clear like um, maybe a child would or something because i'm just going to eat this soup you know i'm not doing anything fancy with it so just straighten out the best you can and then dice up some chicken and put it in there some of that meat from the thighs and the legs and um, i wanted to show you this if you can see this layer of kind of clear yellow, that's fat. Chicken thighs have a lot of fat, and so that's what keeps them nice and moist. But remember, I took all the, all the skin off. We didn't use the skin, so it's not as high fat as if we used the skin, which we didn't. So, but when your soup is gonna have a little bit of fat on it, so if you refrigerate it for a little bit, you can um, then skim the fat off easier because it's gonna firm up going to harden. So I looked at it this morning, I was going to take a picture and I didn't, but there's this nice little layer of yellow fat on there that I'll take off before I heat it back up. I have heard that you can take a, um, an ice cube and wrap it in um, cheesecloth and then dab off the fat, but I've never tried that. To me it's just too much trouble, so I just refrigerate it for a while. Okay. So, um, I decided that I would cook these um, potatoes and zucchini to go with the chicken breast. So I, ha I have the chicken breast in a container at home, and when I'm ready to serve that meal, what I will do is put that chicken breast in a little skillet with a little chicken broth, and just over really low heat, warm it up until it's 165 degrees. Okay, so that's how I'll fix my chicken breast. And then I will um, slice it and maybe pour a little bit of the drippings from the pan over it to keep it moist. But then I'll serve it with these um, potatoes and zucchini that my husband couldn't keep his hands out of last night. Um, so I would take, I would preheat my oven to 375 and fix my, my baking sheet with some parchment in the bottom. Then I'm going to wash my potatoes and trim them and, and my zucchini too, and then just, um, just toss them in a little bit of oil in a Ziploc bag. I see on cooking shows where they drizzle the oil over it on the pan and then they put their hands in there. I don't want to do that. So I just put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in a Ziploc bag, put in my vegetables and then just mush them around and then I don't have to touch them. So, um, so then I just baked them. And they, like I said, my husband would stay away from them, so I'm not sure I'm going to have enough for this meal. But, um, but I did. So let's go back. So I'll take that and serve it with the chicken breast went for one of our meals this week. And um, just heat it up the same way. Just put it in a little, little skillet with a lid on it and let it warm up. Okay, chicken sheet pan dinner. <coughs> We have a lot of sheet pan enthusiasts, I think. I think it's kind of a new thing for people to do this sheet pan thing. And when I first saw the recipes, I thought, uh, okay, whatever. But then I started trying some of the recipes and now I'm just doing my own thing with it. To me, cooking everything together on the sheet pan just gives more flavor to everything that you're cooking because there's all of the different flavors there and they kind of meld with each other and really taste good. So this is kind of a basic recipe that I fixed and um, I would use four bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. Now, you can also use a bone-in skin-on chicken breast and maybe for 
you, that's the better option because it may just be for a couple. For us, I need the four thighs, and I like the thighs because they're they're uh, so tender and moist. But you could also use a chicken breast, and that would be fine. A large sweet potato that I peeled and cut into wedges, and you'll see them in a minute. A bunch of asparagus, two tablespoons of olive oil, some salt, pepper, some fresh garlic, and then a tablespoon of soft butter and zest from one lemon. Let me just stop and tell you about garlic, and I'm sorry that I didn't have one to bring, but it, at the grocery stores, um, you can go to uh, the section where they have a lot of the little um, herbs and things, and you know where they have the packaged herbs? Well, above those or beside those, you'll see little tubes of <coughs> garlic, basil, ginger, just a lot of fresh, freshly made garlics and things, and they have rosemary, they have cilantro, and it's a paste. It's, it squeezes out like toothpaste, squeezes out of a tube, and they are excellent. They are really, really good. I don't like garlic that comes in a jar, jar with the brine in it. It's too strong or something, but whatever they do, however they process this, it's, um, it's really good. So that's a time saver for you, is to get things like that to add flavor to your food without spending the time taking the, you know, the garlic's a problem for me. It's just a nuisance. So I just try to find other ways to get the flavor. So there's your, um, there's your instructions. We're going to take a sheet pan and we're going to either line it with foil or with parchment paper so that it's easy to clean up. And then we're going to put our thighs at one end of that pan and salt and pepper them. And go ahead and put them in the oven at 3, or 425, I'm sorry. And let them roast for about 15 to 20 minutes. Then we're going to pull the sheet pan out and we're going to add our vegetables um, so that they can kind of, they'll kind of mix in with some of the chicken fat. I, this time, skipped the olive oil on the on the vegetables and I didn't miss it. There was plenty of chicken renderings on the, on the tray for me. Um, then you're gonna mix that butter and garlic and lemon zest and spread it on the chicken thighs and that's gonna help give them some flavor and um, some moisture. So then you're gonna roast it about 25 to 30 more minutes till your internal temperature is 160 degrees and you will have dinner ready. So here it is in pictures. I trimmed, this is how I trimmed my, my vegetables. With asparagus, all you have to do is, is um, take it in your hands like this and do this, and it snaps off where it's supposed to. The, the part that's tender stays over here, and the part that's tough stays over here. And save those ends because they add a lot of flavor to, um, like that chicken stock that I made out of the out of the um, chicken that we cooked, I could have added those in. I didn't, but I could have, and should have probably. So this is some of the pictures. This is what it looked like when it was all done, and then I put it on a big, a big um, platter and covered it with um, plastic and then foil, and um, we'll have that for dinner one day this week. And it's it's ready. All I have to do is heat it up. So you can do some other things with the sheet pan. You could do um, white potatoes with Brussels sprouts and maybe instead of putting the garlic butter on your chicken, put some barbecue sauce on it. You could use butternut squash and green beans and put some cranberry sauce on the chicken as a glaze instead of, instead of the garlic. Or use carrots and zucchini and honey mustard sauce. So there's just a lot of ways that you can fix this. Like I said, you can use the chicken breast. You don't have to use the chicken thigh, and you could also use pork loin or um, some kind of beef. You know, just beef and hamburger patties would be great. You could do that and, and make it a really nice dinner that way. So let's talk about using those um, those pre-chopped and pre-cooked items. Um, in some of the pictures you may have seen already a, a grill in the background with a pork loin, pork tenderloin in it. One of my new favorite kitchen tools
individuals is a Cuisin art, they call it the griddler, and it has four appliances in one. It has the grill, like that gives you grill marks. It has the griddle, like the thing for pancakes or something that you want to keep flat. It has a waffle maker, and then it has a panini press. So all of those plates, it's just little plates of metal that pop in and pop out. They're um, scratch resistant, they are um, non-stick, that you can put them in the dishwasher. It's wonderful, it's the greatest tool. So if, you, if you're thinking about a present for a birthday or something, think about that. <clears throat> so I, while I was cooking the other stuff, the first thing I did is I put my pork tenderloin in the griddler and started it cooking. And then I started doing the other stuff that I did yesterday. You could cook that tenderloin in a grill pan on the stove or like what I'm describing to you with the griddler is sort of like a George Foreman grill. Or you can cook it outside if you want to. And that's usually the way that we do it. But I decided that I was doing this by myself yesterday and I just used the griddler. Um, then I'm gonna prepare barley with pesto and veggies. And I gave you the directions and you're gonna see it in pictures in a minute. But I used some of the barley that I cooked and set aside for the week. And that's what I used to make this dish, okay? So there's the griddler, right there. So when, um, when I got my, my pork loin done, I checked it with an internal temperature of 165. When you read charts, it's not gonna say that hot, but I'm picky, and so I wanted that hot. So 165 is what I got it to. Then I took those vegetables from the jars and added a little bit of butter into um, my skillet and added the veggies and I sauteed them until they're tenderish. And then I added um, some um, peas, some frozen peas, and two cups of barley that was cooked and a couple of tablespoons of pesto. And this is what the plate looked like. Served it just with a salad, but um, the, the tenderloin, the pork tenderloin, is very, very lean, but it is very um, tender and moist if you don't overcook it. And I get mine at Safeway, and I don't know if I'm supposed to say brand names or not, but I'm going to. <laughs> it's Hormel, and they come um, with they come with um, uh, teriyaki, or they come with garlic and herbs, um, several different varieties. I just get the plain one. We like the plain one. But it cooks really quickly. It doesn't take very long at all. So it's really good for a, an evening when you don't have a lot of time. <clears throat> this side dish went together in just a, about five minutes because the barley was already cooked and in the refrigerator. And then I just put a little salad together uh, with some of those, actually some of the um, shredded carrots that I had put aside. I did that. So, so that's that's another idea. Okay, this is my pantry dinners. I love pantry dinners, and I love to come up with creative ideas. You could cut up some of that pork roast, that pork loin, and put in it, um, you could put some shredded chicken in it and have a chicken and veggie chili. So, um, but I like this because I always have these things on hand. And if I come home and I need to get dinner on the table right now, I will do this before I take off my shoes or change my clothes. I will come in the kitchen and take some of those vegetables out of my jars in the refrigerator, put them in the pan, just like I do for everything, and um, let them saute a little bit. Then I just put my um, beans in a colander and drain them and rinse them off. I buy the low sodium to start with, and then I rinse them off as well because I don't. I want to control how much salt is in this, and <clears throat> then I will add my beans. I drain them, add them to this, and add in my chicken and my whole cut of corn and my chicken broth, and then I put in some diced tomatoes and some green chili. I didn't put a lot of green chilies in this one, and it's not very hot. And I normally would make it a little more spicy, but um, I didn't add any more. So I would cover it and simmer it. The longer you simmer it, the better it is. So I would run and get 
you know, I'd go change my clothes, go water the garden, come back in, and it would be ready to eat. You can serve it with, you could make cornbread if you want to do that, but I like to just serve it with sour cream and some cheese and maybe some salsa and then chips, and it's just really good. And it's a, it fills you up, it's a whole meal. And remember how good it is for you? Do you remember some of our past lectures were talking about um, the beans and how good they are because they're high in protein and they're really high in fiber, so those are two good things about the beans. And then, um, of course, the tomatoes are really high in certain um, phytochemicals because of their bright color. So this is a really good nourishing meal that's easy to put together. Okay, so that's what it looked like. And, okay. So, Jewel, if you would like to take the pot and get a spoon and in those little cups, um, just go ahead and put oh, about three or four spoonfuls in those and then just hand them out. We ha I brought some of the chili with me. I didn't bring all of the stuff to add to the top of it, but I did bring a jar of chili and heated it up. So, Jewel will hand you some out. And meanwhile, we'll go on to breakfast on the go. So this is, this is my own made up recipe. This is something that I started when Anthony, my son, was about, in about, like a sophomore. He was going off to school without eating any breakfast. And we know that that's something that we're not supposed to do. We should have breakfast every morning. So he was going off without breakfast and um, my husband would do the same thing. Head out to, he had an hour drive and he'd head out to work and not eat breakfast, or he would stop at, um, he would stop at McDonald's or someplace and get something. So I decided to take the bull by the horn and make something that they could, that they could fix themselves. So I made a, a like a quiche filling, like, I made up like a quiche filling with um, eggs and and milk, and then I put veggies and things into some, I, the first time I did it, I did it in um, a muffin pan, and they were kind of too small, and so I started using ramekins. So I make up this, this, um, this egg mixture, and then I put um, things like uh, cheese and ham and vegetables into the ramekin, pour over the, the um, milk and egg mixture and bake it like you would a quiche, and then we serve it on an English muffin. So this was good for me because they could do it themselves. I didn't have to do it for them. I just made the, the little patties of egg, and you'll see those too in a little bit. Just made the patties of egg, put them in Ziploc bags, put them in the refrigerator, and then all they had to do was toast their English muffin and add and put their egg in the refrigerator in the microwave for 60 seconds and they had breakfast and they could take it with them. So this is how, um, this is the recipe. I don't know if you all can read the recipes on your handouts. Can you see them without a magnifying glass? Okay, good. Um, because I would be happy to print these off as well. Um, so it's real easy. It doesn't take very long at all. It takes less than an hour to do the whole thing, probably more like 40 minutes. And this is the steps. So I put my ramekins, so you'll see what I'm talking about, the little Pyrex um, ramekin, or you can use anything. If you could use foil, um, the little mini foil pie pans if you wanted. Or you could use a muffin pan, especially if you got one of those that have the bigger, the bigger muffins, okay? Um, so I just put my goodies in there. When I was doing this routinely for my guys, I would let them choose what they wanted. And they would put in sausage or they would put in bacon. Ham is my favorite, it's not theirs, but I would put in, you know, I like to put in ham and um, uh, any sausage or anything like that, just um, to have a little bit of meat. And then, or you could leave that out. I like bell peppers and onions. Um, in these, I put a little bit of zucchini because I have a lot of zucchini to use. And then some cheese, just a little bit of cheese, and fill them up and bake them. So is, is that something that can be maybe even if it's broken? Can you make up a size 
I have frozen them. I have frozen them and they, they're okay. It changes the texture just a little bit. That maybe makes it a little bit tougher when they're not frozen, they're real fluffy. Okay. So that's the only thing I would say. So there, there you can see, this is how they go into the refrigerator and use their little baggies. Okay, another um, thing that I like to do is to make a, um, a parfait, a berry parfait. And this is using, um, once again, a jar, a canning jar. And then I use um, Greek yogurt. And you could use your favorite yogurt. I use vanilla Greek yogurt, but you could use plain or you could use a flavor if you want. You don't have to use Greek yogurt, you could just use regular yogurt. But um, I just put about three fourths of a cup in the bottom of the jar, rather sloppily. And then I added in just a little bit, a little drizzle of honey, and then the, the mixed berries. And what I did is I just put the berries in. Um, on top of the yogurt, and they were frozen. Then I just put them in the refrigerator, and those berries thaw out just on top of the yogurt, and they make it really, um, with a lot of juice, they make it really pretty. Then I'm gonna have Jewel hand me, can you hand me that, um, that candy jar and that little box with the blue bin? <coughs>
the first slide shows, our first picture shows, um, they have, I think it's sweet potato fettuccine. It's sweet potatoes that are cut to look just like fettuccine noodles, and then you use those with the sauce, I guess. So you, you know, I could do that at home if I wanted to. Um, this slide shows down here at the bottom, there are um, chopped up celery and onion and red onion and bell pepper. I can't remember. There's several things down there. There's all of these trays of vegetables that are chopped in one way or another, some made for stir fries. So you could get those. There's um, here, there's some bags that have shredded cabbage for, uh, for slaw um, and different things to steam and to, um, to use without having to do anything. You can cook right in these bags. More of this. Um, this is some more of that, um, the noodles made out of uh, zucchini and what have you, and then of course the fruit bowls. So you, you can go to the store and really get a lot of stuff and not have to do all that preliminary work. And so that's one option. There's also um, like potatoes already mashed and ready, you just heat them up. And we have gotten those, they're okay. And then there's potatoes here that are already shredded up and I didn't even go to the frozen aisle, I just got some frozen berries, which frozen berries are really easier to deal with than um, having to wash your berries, your fresh ones, and co they're cost effective to frozen berries are. So, um, so, okay. I'm gonna put it back to there and then I'm just gonna kind of walk through what I did yesterday for a couple of minutes. Remember I made the, the breakfast sandwiches and those were really easy to do and I have now sandwiches for about five, six days. So, and then I cooked all that chicken. I cooked a whole chicken and 10 thighs all together. Last night for dinner, we actually had the thighs and the roast potatoes and roast zucchini. So that's what we had for dinner. Um, I have still in the refrigerator six thighs that I can do something with this week. So what might I do? I might put them in a roasting pan and put some barbecue sauce on them and heat them up and then have that with some of the vegetables or, or something made out of the barley, but probably just a vegetable. Um, my whole chicken is waiting. My breast we can use for a meal along with the sweet potatoes and or whatever I fix to go with them. And so, and then I had my little pork roast. Um, it's enough for two meals for my family. They're a little pricey, about $8 each, but when it's for two meals, it's really, and for some of you, that might just be enough for three meals. So we'll use that. Um, so I'm looking forward to a week of good eating, and I'm glad that I had the opportunity to prepare the foods and take the pictures to show you so that I could get my week's worth of meals done. So I feel accomplished. <laughs> so are there any questions? Yes. Okay, say you have your stuff today, mm -hmm. and you can't eat it today. Can you freeze it? You can freeze it. Uh, on the fifth day? On the fifth day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yep. And it's after you take it out of the freezer, you want to thaw it and use it right away. No, don't refreeze it or anything like that. Well, you said you didn't, peppers didn't like them, but you used them in a lot of things. Oh, I don't like dealing with them. Oh, I don't like cleaning them and they stain everything, and I love eating them, but they, yeah. I don't really like to chop anything. <laughs> I'm kind of lazy that way, but that's why we have all these choppers. Oh, I was gonna tell you about the appliances. The little chopper that I described is really good and really worth the money. Um, the, um, the, I love my griddler, and then I got one of those one pots. Everybody here is a one pot. It's like a slow cooker and a pressure cooker together. Uh, the jury's still out for me. I've only used it a few times, so I'm not yet sold on it. I love my crock pot. Do a lot with the crock pot, so that's a good thing. And then um, we we just go crazy when there's one of those as seen on TV things. You know, one of those little gadgets. My husband just gets one because he can, and some of them work and some of them don't. So. 
it's just it's fun to kind of try things and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. I want to say no. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say no, but, um, and I don't, I really don't know how baby carrots are made, but I've been told that they're not really baby carrots, that they're bigger carrots that they put in a machine to make them that shape. I don't know that for certain, so um, I should probably look that up and see what I'm talking about, but um, I just don't think they taste good. and. They're way more expensive to use, so yeah. But they are convenient, so yeah. Do you, do you, do you use a salad dressing with that side of the salad? Yeah, yeah. Like French or something. Yeah, like yes. Yeah. So I would just I tend to make um, a vinaigrette. I tend to just make it. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. But I would take a little container of salad dressing. Mm -hmm. Or here, when I bring it here, I just go in the kitchen and get some of the salad dressing that they have. So. Um, yeah, but I would put dressing. A vinaigrette is just oil and vinegar and however you want to season it. And I put a little dash of Dijon mustard in it because that helps the goodness. So, anything else? Well, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you next month.